Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Zero to 60. I just want to do a quick video on a new skin that I've got for the Androids, and we're running it on this car and also the X5. In fact, it's been running on the X5 for about two weeks now, doing some testing before I wanted to share it with everyone. Um, I'm always a bit dubious with running launches or skins on Android units because they aren't... There could be some maliciousness going on, and they can also cause things to crash. Um, this skin has caused no issues on this car so far, or the X5. Uh, it's a little bit on this car today, to be honest, but yeah, no issues with it at all. Um, and the reason I sort of really like it is it looks like a triple C or even an early NBT unit, and it integrates brilliantly with your original iDrive controller. So the person that's created this skin, he he's obviously a BMW guy, and I guess he's just trying to go for that factory integration look, but also trying to make it work as much like a factory unit as he could. Sorry about the seatbelt noise. So I'll try and catch it in on the angle here, but Oh, car's gone to sleep. Okay, there we are. Um, oh, Seatbelt again. So basically, you can use the iDrive controller to control the menus, obviously. Uh, but you can also do things like create a shortcut. So if I move the iDrive controller over to the right, it goes over to the right. I can add a shortcut, add a custom menu. And these are basically all the apps that I've got on this iDrive unit. Um, I'm not going to use it on this car, but this app... This skin does have, where was it? Sports displays. Yes, and if you have a deep OBD setup, you can actually display sports displays. Uh, just a heads up, that's only gonna work for cars that are running MHD. If you've got an, uh, a JB4 like I do, it will interrupt deep OBD USB interface devices. Um, so sport displays will be out the window for you. But if you do have a car running MHD and a Bluetooth dongle to connect, deep OBD, you can set up these gauges to display pretty much whatever you want. I was playing with it before on the anticipation of being able to have a, a boost gauge right there, but unfortunately, again, because I got the JV4, it stops me from being able to use that. Um, anyway, let's go back to the home screen. I think I mentioned it before, but all of these menus are fully customizable. Now, that was a big deal for me because with my standard Android skin, <sighs> Generally, I'll either go to YouTube, YouTube Music, or CarPlay, and you can only configure a certain amount of the icons on the main screen. So to get to these, or to get to some of the apps, I had to do a lot of clicking, where now I can have everything I want straight away on the main home screen. I've still got things in here that I'm probably never going to use, like I've got, I can go to Multimedia, it's another sub-menu where I've got my media playback, so any devices, sorry, any files I have stored on the device, we can play it through there. Um, if I'm on or stuck somewhere where I'm in the car for hours for whatever reason, parked up, obviously, and I wanna watch a movie, I can do that through my Plex setup or TV shows. And it's all being controlled by the iDrive controller. Keep my old apartment. Why we? But let's get out of that. In fact, let's go back to the home screen and go back again. And apps will take me to every app that I have on this Android device. So I can access every single app. There's that deep OBD app I was mentioning. Uh, every single app that I have on here from the iDrive main menu right there. And it is super, super snappy. But the main three that I use are YouTube, CarPlay, and YouTube Music. I have CarPlay set up on this because if I want to do any navigation or anything, um, it's almost like with Apple CarPlay, they've made everything easy to be controlled by a knob. So using ways to go to these addresses here it's super easy to control where if i use the uh, native android ways app which we will go to here you can't actually control much with the iDrive knob. It's re this app is really set up to be controlled by touchscreen, which is fine, like in the X5, because you've got a nice, easy to use touchscreen, but using touchscreens on these E92 screens is a bit, it's a bit crap. It's hard to reach and everything's a bit too small. Anyway, let's go back to the main menu again. If I can get there. Uh, something that I just want to touch on as well, I do run the YouTube TV app. The reason for that is the YouTube TV app is designed to be controlled by a TV remote and a TV remote is a lot like an iDrive controller. So I can control pretty much everything on the app perfectly with the iDrive controller from, let's just turn it down so I can get copy written, but we can skip through the tracks. Oh, just there, all the videos, all with the iDrive controller. Or we can go down and pick another video. I don't know what that video was. 
someone there. Anyway, let's go back to the home screen. So for my setup with the iDrive controller, it's absolutely perfect. I can't remember if I mentioned it before, but I did end up storing a triple, uh, sorry, a CIC controller into this car. I've still only got the triple C main base unit. And if I hold menu, we'll go back to my old school triple C, which you never really use. Go back to that one. Um, yeah, but that actually does give me some a few extra functions. So now I can actually add shortcuts in Android for these buttons here. And even having things like a back button is actually quite nice because if I go into a menu that I don't want to go into, I can just go back and we go back. Um, so yeah, I actually quite like it. I should have said it before, there is going to be links to this in the description, both the website for the app and also the Facebook page. Um, something that a lot of guys do which i do not do they run media on the actual device now this is set up to very nicely play mp3 files that sort of stuff and it will actually link to the bluetooth app on the app itself if you're using an app like spotify or youtube music you'll actually get the song titles if we just go to youtube music here and click play we'll go back to the skin we've actually got the song title at the top there and if i go to the next one so it does give you a nicer sort of integrated display. The bars that we're seeing here is just the Wi-Fi connection. You can actually get it to display your cellular signal or the Wi-Fi, depending on how you're connecting to the internet. But yeah, that's there and you've got a little bit of time. Now, the thing that I did that drew me to this app originally is the vehicle info integration. Now, unfortunately, in this car, I can't make use of it. The vehicle info works through either deep OBD, the Android's default connection, which gives you things like fuel level, RPMs, ambient temperature, and something else that's not very helpful. But if you have deep OBD or an iBus connection, you can get access to some cool stuff. Um, so let's go and show you what that is in the X5, because the X5's got that access. And unfortunately, the only reason I can't do it is, I can't remember if I mentioned it before, but the JB4 blocks the signal to a Bluetooth USB dongle. So when I have my MHD adapter or any Bluetooth dongle in there, I can't use the JB4. So for normal driving, that's no good because the JB4 needs access to all that data. Um, but yeah, if you're an MHD car, you can get a Bluetooth, um, either a Wi-Fi or a Bluetooth dongle, and you can actually get things like boost, transmission temperature, fully customize these gauges to display whatever you want. So it'd actually be a nice little display that's sort of native on the Android. You're not running a separate app connecting to MHD, that sort of stuff. I think it's quite nice. All right, let's go and show you what these features are in the X5. Okay, so I haven't actually got the app to auto open on this uh, unit, uh, mainly because this was a unit I was testing on. I didn't want it to mess with anything too much, but I have got it set. So if I hit the home screen, or the home button, I should say, we go to the app there. Now it's exactly the same app. It does display differently whether you've got a 16 by nine or an ultra wide Android unit. And you can actually configure fonts and menu size and all that sort of stuff to make it look as nice as you want. Now, unfortunately this car not having iDrive, we have no iDrive controller. So this becomes a full touch screen, but where this car does shine over my car, if I just turn the ignition on, if we go to vehicle info, because we have the iBus dongle, we actually get all of the vehicle data. So uh, well, basically all your trip computer stuff is there in this screen and it just looks a little bit more refined. And then we have things like the gauges, they will actually work. So we can see we've got a full tank of fuel, speed or display, load, torque, blah, blah, blah. Um, I haven't played with the gauges much. This car is not a performance car. Uh, there's no real need to do it, but I did think it was really nice how it did integrate. Oh, hang on, click the wrong thing. It did integrate with all this sort of stuff. Um, these menus, basically you get warnings like, uh, basically the warnings that come up on this, the center display there, but you can see them all there. Um, and I think we can do service intervals. And what's that? Oh. Okay, the bottom one loads the iBus app. And if you've worked it out, the skin is just pulling data from the iBus app. If you've got the, U the deep OBD app, it will pull the data from that as well. Again, with the DP OBD app, it is completely free, but you do need to run a Bluetooth dongle full time into the car. But yeah, anyway, even on this car, we've got it set up so that we've got nice shortcuts for everything we want to use. We've got YouTube. This car we use because it's sort of shared a lot. We use the Bluetooth player a fair bit. Navigation, we've just got it separate. So it'll go in, we can run Waze or Google Maps. It's all really quite nice. Like I said, I've been using this for about two weeks in this car. I put it on my car today just to make sure that it was gonna work all right in the E90 scenario. 
I think it's actually better with the iDrive controller. Uh, it hasn't caused any crashes or anything bad. Um, the only thing that is a little bit disappointing is you do need to run deep OBD to pull up all the data on the E92s, which means I can't do it because my JB4 is going to get in the way. But aside from that, it's actually a really cool app. Highly recommend it. Links down below. If you've got any questions about it, let us know. But it's a nice addition to your Android unit. Guys, that's today's video. I think we're going to go drag racing on Sunday. If you made it this far, let me know if you want to see me do 8th mile at Lakeside. I'm getting pretty keen. I don't know if my clutch packs will be because it's going to be standstill racing. We'll see how we go. All right, guys. We'll catch you tomorrow.